But I would scream. I would scream. I actually think I did. Oh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no one laughed, though. <laughs> no, I guess everybody was uh, scared as well. Yes, so, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a legitimate reason to scream, I, I would say. All right. So I'm joined in the global <laughs> studio today by the most lacquer teacher in South Africa, the one and only Kase. Hey, Chiago. Hey, Kase. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier about how hot it is, and mm. I think <laughs> besides that, everything's good. Yeah, yeah. Here in Brazil, it's really hot too. Yeah, we share the same season time, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you know it's it's one of those things where it, you take it as it comes. Like, what can you do about it, really? Yeah. So I like that yeah. you take it as it comes. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, today we're gonna be talking all about travel experiences. Uh, Cassie and I have here um, some memorable travel stories to share with you guys today. And to get started with this topic, I have a funny little thing here to read to you guys. It's fun. Yeah, so check it out. Vacation or staycation? You know, not taking time off can be a huge complication. Whether you <laughs> see a coral snake next to you or make a taxi driver blush with embarrassment, Travel stories are always fun to share. <laughs> but we do have some nice words here, right? So I uh, can say, what is a staycation? Like, what's the difference between a vacation and a staycation? So a vacation is, we would use this word when we are traveling. We're going away, mm. we're traveling usually abroad. You know, we tend to differentiate between a staycation and a vacation as the vacation would be the one where you're going abroad. And the staycation is the one where you're staying with, in, you know, local vacation in your country, in your mm. city. And even we often use it to say, like, I'm not going away this holiday or this vacation. I say holiday. Um, we're mm. going to stay at home. So your staycation could just be you at home relaxing um, mm. on your days off. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I, I think that English can be quite literal sometimes, you know, as a mm. non-native speaker of English. I, I notice uh -huh. that sometimes, like, you know, some of the words can be quite literal, yeah? If you think about, oh, yeah, it makes sense, right? Staycation, I stay locally, I don't go abroad. Exactly. And uh, when you take time off, what do you do? What does that mean? So if you take time off, you're taking a break from doing something, especially work. So you can take time off from your studies as well, or you can take time off from doing a particular activity. Like maybe I, I'm, I'm used to going to the gym like every day of the week and mm -hmm. then I take time off from going to the gym means I'm just taking a break from doing that activity and uh here in this little introduction we also said uh the word blush right what's that <laughs> so when you make someone blush you well you make them shy or you make them feel a little bit embarrassed I also want to add that what it means what we when we're blushing is our cheeks tend to go red or our faces mm. in general go pink or red. Um, but I, ha I just want to add for the ladies out there, I mean, we all love makeup. So blush also refers to, you know, the actual makeup that we use to give ourselves that effect. Because, you know, right. rosy cheeks are a sign that you're youthful and you're, <laughs> you know, I don't know, it's just a good, positive, healthy sign. Healthy people blush is what the... <laughs> Uh -huh. The idea is there, but yeah, to blush is to get embarrassed or feel embarrassed and have your cheeks and face go red. Rosy cheeks. That's Rosy nice. cheeks. Rosy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it like Rosy from the, cheeks, the color? Pink. pink, right? Exactly. Exactly. Mm. When we were prepping for this episode, Cassie, we were talking about, you know, uh, how sometimes learners, they struggle to uh, tell the difference between the words holiday, vacation and trip. Right, they can be quite confusing. Um, how would you they explain the be. difference of these three words? We know that in American English, you know, if people are referring to taking time off to go away or plan some kind of stay in a different location, they usually say that they're going on vacation. But in British English and here in South Africa as well, we would also refer to that as a holiday. I'm going on holiday. So I'm going away on holiday next week, and that just doesn't refer to one day as it would in, you know, we spoke about that as well. Uh, uh, holidays usually like Christmas time or um, this particular national day that people celebrate. But for us, it's actually the same meaning as a vacation. And then, you know, we also spoke about trip. 
So people will say, oh, am I going on vacation or am I going on a trip? I think in general, they have a very similar meaning. It all means you're going on a journey from one place to another. But a trip can also be, usually it's it's a short, um, mm. well, not always, but we can we usually use it in that way. Like I'm, I'm going on a trip to my grandmother's house or mm. my son is going on a trip to with his, with his school uh, to the local museum. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a short period and you're usually going and then coming back. You know, that word trip reminds me of, uh, of a classic Beatles song called Day Tripper. She was a day tripper. The song talks about a girl who is a day tripper. I, I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe uh, she takes short trips. Could it's a great be, song. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's one of the first ones I learned on guitar, actually. Oh, you know. wow. I, I would love to hear you play that. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can uh, grab the guitar, you know, in a future episode just to play that yeah. main riff. It's really cool. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So uh, today um, we're going to be talking all about trips and traveling. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell down below so you are notified every time we post uh, a new video here on YouTube, a new video podcast, because every week we put out lessons like this to help you uh, go from a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker. So make sure you subscribe and follow us here on YouTube as well. Uh, Well, we are talking about trips and traveling. I have to admit, Cassie, one of my, uh, not regrets, but maybe one of the things that kind of, you know, bums me out sometimes is the fact that I have never had the opportunity to go abroad. At least not yet. You know, it's one of those things Uh that I still have to tick off my bucket list, <laughs> you know, but I am confident. I am hopeful that some, uh, you know, I will be able to realize this dream of going abroad soon. Definitely. Like, I mean, if we think about it, like as I, I cannot tell you how amazing it actually is that you mm. say this. And I mean, I tell you this all the time, but you, your English is impeccable and mm. you've never left Brazil. So I think this is is not something to feel bummed out about. Well, mm. you know, like if you look at it from that perspective, it's something sure. to feel yeah. proud of, right? Thanks for that. I really appreciate that. By the way, uh, what does it mean to be bummed out about something? Just to feel sad and, you know, you're feeling a little bit depressed about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't even say a little bit. Sometimes if you're really bummed out, you could be mm-hmm. very depressed about, you know, yeah. that the state of, of the situation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I view that as an accomplishment that I have in my life, for sure. Yeah, being able to learn English as well as I did here in my home country. For me, uh, I think a, a big de- a big uh, uh, part of that was talking to people as much as possible. Yeah, so sometimes I would meet some native speakers on the street in my hometown. Sometimes I had some friends also who spoke English, so, you know, we practiced together. But the, the, the crazy thing is that nowadays you don't even have to know people necessarily that speak English mm-hmm. to practice or speak, like, you know, personally. Right. Uh, uh-huh. Let's say the app, for example, yeah, the real life English app. You can just pop up there and True. connect with someone, have a short four minute conversation, and you know, it's one of those things that wow. I mean, we have so many resources nowadays, right? By the way, exactly. uh, for the listeners here, uh, if you haven't tried the app yet, give it a try. I mean, uh, you know, I wish I had that. You know, when I was learning English uh, many many years ago, so it's free. Yeah. Just uh, click the link in the description or. Real Life English on your favorite app store, search for it and uh, give it a try. Yeah, exactly. Plus, I like that you mentioned like a quick, you know, quick four minute call. You don't you won't even have yeah. time to blush in four minutes. You'll just <laughs> speak to the stranger. You, no embarrassment. Just, you know, quick, short call. And you'll already have that, you know, experience and the fun side of meeting someone new. So what do you have to lose? <laughs> so, Cassie, I wanted to share with you uh, my memorable travel experience one of them yeah it was a trip that i took locally here in brazil and i think it's a it's a good example of when expectations don't meet reality <laughs> you know it was the first time i visited florianopolis right here in brazil it's in the south and um you know we uh, brazilians we tend to call it floripa you've been there too yeah at our last summit so yeah. you know the, the, the place, the island, it's a beautiful <laughs> place. It's an amazing place, uh, beautiful beaches. But the first time I went there actually wasn't so good. And let me explain why, right? That was, I think, 2018. And uh, what happened was I got really disappointed with the hotel 
where I stayed at, you know, because when I was booking the hotel, uh, you know, before going there, the pictures looked amazing, you know, they looked incredible, like, oh, this is such a nice place to stay in. But when we got there, and you know, it was me and my family, right? I took my wife and my uh, son, who was, I think, seven years old at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter wasn't born yet. It was our first time ever uh, in Floripa, right? And uh, we got really disappointed with the hotel because, um, you know, it's one of those hotels that, um, I don't know, it seems like time hasn't been kind to the place, you know? So uh, it wasn't at all like the pictures showed on the website. And it was a big place. It was a, a huge space. Yeah, even external area. But uh, there were many deactivated facilities that hadn't been used for a long time. So, you know, it's one of those places where you look around and go like, okay, I imagine that this place used to be a really good place like 30, 40 years ago. But I don't know, maybe business wasn't going well over the years or um, I don't know what happened. But, you know, it seems like the, the place, the hotel has declined over, over time. And uh, to make matters even, let's say, worse, uh, I think on our last day there, there was even uh -huh. a, a mini coral snake, what? you know, uh, by the entrance. And <laughs> it was insane. You know, I don't know if it is, if it was poisonous or not, you know. But what I remember is uh, seeing some guys from the hotel who worked there, you know, uh, try, trying to capture it with a kind of a, a plastic bottle, maybe to call animal <laughs> services. So I was like, oh man, I mean, uh, we even have coral snakes here. I mean, uh, that's not shaping to be a good <laughs> stay here, <laughs> you know. But yeah, oh, but overall we enjoyed the, the trip, right? Like visiting the beaches and, you know, uh, visiting some of the island, right? But I think that the hotel was a, a big bummer for us, yeah. You mentioned an interesting uh, word combination. You said deactivated facilities mm. what what does that mean yeah a facility is a place right uh, where maybe an activity takes place yeah so at that hotel uh, there were some stages for performances you know i imagine that people used to hold concerts there for example yeah but you know you could see that it was deactivated like you know it wasn't in use uh -huh. yeah yeah there's another word you used you you said like um it was declining, like, like, mm. so when something is in decline or when it's declining, what is, what does that mm. mean? I think it's the opposite of progress, right? So when you progress, you go upwards, right? You are improving, 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 getting better. If you are declining, it's the opposite. Yeah? You are downgrading. Yeah. You are lowering. Yeah. Your progress. Yeah. Or the quality of the service you provide. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Excellent. it. So it was an interesting experience. Um, aside from that, like I said, I mean, uh, we had a good time. We took many pictures and, hey. uh, you know, I, I got to go back to Floripa all the times, you know, after that yeah. and, you know, all the experiences were like amazing. Yeah. I just, I have questions about the coral snake. I'm sorry. I hate <laughs> snakes. Snakes. Me too. Yeah. Are weird. No arms, no legs, just a <laughs> slithering muscle. Ugh, I'm just not. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's disgusting. It oh, I, I love animals, but I just snakes <laughs> need to stay away from me. But I have a question. Uh -huh. How, firstly, how did you react? What was your reaction to the snake? I reacted in a very brave way by oh. staying away from it. <laughs> <laughs> like you know really away from it like you know guys you know <laughs> there's a snake here then uh, you know what two guys who worked at the hotel they went there and you know dealt with it and then yeah. called somebody responsible yeah but yeah no i kept my distance come on yeah i wasn't vacation yeah. <laughs> this snake is not gonna ruin our vacation i paid no, no. for this no 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 come on but uh yeah. you also had a an interesting story to share right can i say um Kind of related to bandit, I believe, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> What's a bandit, by the way? So a bandit is like a criminal or uh, a lawbreaker. Uh, you can you might hear it like in old West movies, like you know the bandits are those bad guys who are you know robbing the bank or who are trying to break the law in some way. But it's it's. My story is not about someone breaking the law. It's like someone mm. causing trouble. And this is another way that you can describe, uh, another way you can 
a word you can use to describe someone who likes causing trouble and just mischief and just not following rules, this bandit who... Mm. <laughs> so anyway, in, this, mm. in my story, it's quite similar to yours in terms of it being relating to animals. Since I was a kid, my family loved, they're really big on like camping and mm. outdoor stays. So we tend to camp in the mountains or at the beach. And it's sort of a family tradition for us to go camping at a particular, at least once a year, we go camping at this one spot. It's called Kohol Bay. Kohol Bay. Uh, Kohol is an Afrikaans word, um, and it means like a ball, like a metal ball, like a, you know, the ones you throw in shot put or anyway. So <laughs> Kohol Bay is a beautiful place. It's stunning. It's like you have the beach on the one side and you have this beautiful mountainous area on the other side. And it's really picturesque. It's stunning. Mm. And, you know, it's the kind of place that like if I describe it to you, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have the most peaceful, tranquil, serene, <laughs> like getaway. <laughs> if I go there, I'm just going to be able to relax and forget about the troubles in the city. And that was the mindset that we had at the time. I remember being quite young and going like, yay, we're getting away from like the hustle and bustle in the city. We're, we're going to spend some time in nature and it's so wonderful. And it really is a wonderful place, but I think what we were not expecting was that nature would come with its own, you know, <laughs> attack. Like we didn't, <laughs> we, it was going to come with its own drama. So I know I described it before as like we were getting away from the drama in the city, but we didn't realize that there was going to be drama in nature. And what we found was that even though we had this beautiful scenery, this stunning, relaxing space around us, because this is not a resort. It's not a, a man-made place. It's literally us camping on the beach with a mountain in the background. And what happens in the space is that there are a lot of baboons um, mm. who live in the mountains. There are a lot of, um, I want to call them like families. I think they're called families of baboons. <laughs> but they live all over the mountains. And they basically come down to mm -hmm. the campsites to feed so basically what these baboons do is they, they scratch in the trash cans and they eat that food. But they've, they get, they've gotten so used to humans invading, I don't want to say invading, but entering their space mm -hmm. that they actually kind of like, they literally cross the line of like going while you're asleep at night, they'll come into your campsite and mm -hmm. they'll scratch in your bags, they'll open your tent, wow. they'll enter your tent, steal your food and then run away. Look at that. That was something we experienced. So we were camping and, you know, just having this, you know, we thought that we were just having the best time. And when we woke up the next morning, there was a baboon literally in the tent stealing toilet paper, chips, like anything he could find inside of the bag. Wow. And luckily, this was not a very big one. So he just mm. ran away. And they're not afraid of humans. They really aren't. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, baboons are quite ferocious when they want to be. They have long, mm. sharp teeth. They have claws. Mm -hmm. They have even, I mean, I, I've never seen this happen, but I've heard that they even snatch kids and babies. Oh so <laughs> maybe this was just <laughs> something we were told so that we stay wow. away from them. I, yeah. I have no idea. But um you know, on a on a lighter note, they 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 tend to be quite harmless. They just really mm -hmm. will steal your food and scare the living mm -hmm. daylight out of you uh, <laughs> if you wake up next to finding one like right there in your tent. So yeah, that was my wow. memorable travel experience. It is memorable. It might be worth yeah. explaining to the listeners what a baboon is, right, Cassie? It's a primate, right? It's a, a kind of monkey, right? Exactly. Um, I think you described it well, like, it's kind of like Rafiki in The Lion King. Ow! Rafiki, yeah. At first glance, it looks like a case of man versus wild. All along the Cape Peninsula, where national park meets residential areas, baboons are a contentious issue. They're so habituated, they're raiding houses almost every day at certain times of the year. While fascinating to watch in the wild and troublesome on the road, having a troop go through your kitchen is another matter. 
and alpha males can be terrifying. Wow. Oh, these baboons! Look at that. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would do. You know, probably just like you know the coral snake thing. I would just you know keep my distance, <laughs> call some, shout at somebody from this. You're like, please help. <laughs> it's the smart thing to do. Like, let yeah. someone else handle it. Yeah, but I think like as I was saying, um, like I don't think that they their intention is to harm humans. I think one of the problems is that you know when we were camping, we were entering a natural space. So we were mm -hmm. humans have sort of infiltrated or entered into this space that belongs technically mm -hmm. in the natural sense to the animals, into you know, and to be. The baboons in this case mm -hmm. but but in the case of like those residents like now that the animals are so comfortable with humans that they think that mm -hmm. the humans are in <laughs> like they think that they can enter the human spaces as mm -hmm. well so i feel like it's just a weird situation right mm -hmm. now in both those places in the campsite and right. in the the video that we just saw from this video here i thought it was very interesting some words that, that we saw uh, before yeah. we get into them you used a very nice word when we when you were sharing your story, uh, which was um, picturesque, right? You were describing oh. the the campsite. It's a beautiful yeah. place. It's picturesque. What is picturesque? So when something or someone looks picturesque, they look beautiful. They're so beautiful that mm. they look almost like I don't know. They it's the right like they could you could take a photo like a mm -hmm. picturesque sunset is like something you want to capture mm. and and keep forever you want to capture that moment or that look it's so beautiful it's so mm -hmm. stunning think of it like that like when yeah. something is picturesque it's so beautiful that you want to capture it it's a nice word it kind of reminds me of exquisite i don't know why but it reminds me of exquisite yeah. you know yeah yeah it, it basically means <laughs> the same thing yeah like something um, really beautiful yeah yeah very mm -hmm. very nice like unbelievably yeah attractive uh -huh. visually attractive cool now, from the video we just saw here, yeah, the clip, um, I heard some nice words there. For example, I think they were saying how baboons are contentious. Yeah. Uh, if something is contentious, what does that mean? If something is contentious, I think basically in the case of this video, right, it causes a very heated argument. It causes, mm -hmm. it's controversial. It causes, mm -hmm. so... Um, just to give you guys a little insight into what the rest of the video is and why it's described as contentious is that, as I mentioned now, like humans are literally living in these spaces where the animals have been living for a long time uh, and they should be, re the animals should be removed or the humans mm -hmm. should leave the space. Right. So that's the argument in mm -hmm. this context. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's a great word. It sounds very advanced. Um, yeah. What about raiding? Uh, uh, they say that baboons raid houses. What does it mean mm -hmm. to raid? If you raid or if something or someone raids a place, they attack that place suddenly. Mm. And you can think of a police raid. I know last week we spoke about the, the police bust. Um, <laughs> and in this case, a raid would be quite similar. You're, you're attacking uh, a particular place to you know, maybe you want you're you're raiding a place in order to find something. In this case, the baboons are raiding it to find food. Right. You know, uh, I have a uh, I don't know a unique brain. I think because you know I I remember dates of movies or names of movies and series and songs. Right. Mm -hmm. Listening to this word now, raid uh, reminds me of the first Indiana Jones movie because you know I believe it's called Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Raiders. Ark. Right? Uh -huh. The raiders, people who raid, right? Yeah. I also heard troublesome, Cassie. Yeah. Uh, they were calling the the baboons, baboons uh, troublesome. What's uh -huh. that? Yeah. In this case, trouble, when something is troublesome, it means that it causes difficulty or annoyance or mm. it just causes problems for the residents. The baboons are causing problems for the residents. Mm -hmm. So you can think trouble. Mm. Trouble mm. is a bad thing. Mm, okay, troublesome. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we're we're referring to mm -hmm. someone causing <laughs> trouble right. or being their behavior 
is uh -huh. is, is annoying. Right. Yeah. I guess uh, I guess we could talk a little bit about the takeaways yeah, from each one of our stories because you know, for me personally, mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I think my takeaway with my story in Floripa and the Coral Snake and the Bad Hotel, my takeaway was appearances can be deceiving. You know, uh -huh. just like I think uh, Agent Smith says to Neo in the Matrix movies, uh -huh. Mr. Anderson, appearances can be <laughs> deceiving. As you well know, appearances can be deceiving. Which... Right, something like that. Uh, because that's exactly what happened, right? I mean, I had one idea or impression of the hotel through the pictures on the website, but actually seeing it, it wasn't <laughs> anything like that. That was my takeaway, you know, appearances can be tricky, can be deceiving. Uh, about your story, you know, on the campsite, the baboons, you know, invading your tent and everything. Uh, any takeaways from that story? Anything you learned, maybe? One thing that I think is important, I mean, I think in both of our cases, well, before I, I answer that question, mm -hmm. what does it mean when something is deceiving? It's uh, It tricks you, it manipulates you, or it makes you believe in something that is not real or not uh, true. So. If, uh -huh. you, if you believe in something that is not real, or it's not that, you can say that that thing deceived you. You were deceived. Uh -huh. You were tricked. Yeah. So in this case, like the images that you saw when you initially booked your vacation or, mm -hmm. or, or planned your vacation, it was not what it, what it was in reality, as you said. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The pictures deceived me. You know, with both of our stories, I think the takeaway for me is that Either researching through like going online and really deep when you're planning a vacation or a stay. In our case, we were both in our you know local countries, but we were in a different part of it's not part of our daily lives. It was a different part of the city or a different you know city altogether, different state. Basically, a diff we were planning to go to different environments, uh, unfamiliar environments. I think that whenever you're doing this, you should definitely research thoroughly like understand what it's like there understand what problems you could face by you know reading some reviews online or even better than reviews and um you know something that someone else writes online would be to actually speak to local people maybe make a mm -hmm. friend or if you're on i don't know if you have the opportunity to it definitely helps to speak to someone who has an understanding or who's been to that place before mm -hmm. and who's had a first-hand experience with that place and Ask them questions about it. You know, what can I expect when I go there? Or tell me mm -hmm. more about this place. This this is what I, I, I realized. I think if I had, you know, done that before, if my family had done that before, we would have been mentally prepared <laughs> for the baboons. And instead of it being like, oh, this is a bad experience, we could have been mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, we expected this. We prepared for this. Mm -hmm. um, and in our case, it was a, a coral snake and baboons. But, you know, imagine you were planning to go to a country, you don't know what, the dr what people dress like, what the dress code mm -hmm. is like in this country. What's what's a common way for people to dress? You know, are they more conservative? Are they, you know, free? You might be surprised, and this could make you feel shocked and you know yeah. have a negative experience. But one way, or even the food, you go to a place and people are eating a type of meat or something that you think is like totally wacky. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this is crazy. I I kind of imagine that. Yeah. Um, but I guess my point here is that, you know, when you're researching and you're, or you in, even better, as I said, speaking with someone who has lived that experience, you get to prepare yourself. You, not only are you uh, informing yourself, but you're really um, opening yourself up to like, you know, possibilities and mm -hmm. understanding cultures and traditions or customs better yeah. in that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Uh, the importance of getting to know people from other places in the world even, right? Uh, yeah. The same case with me. I mean, if I had known a local from Floripa back then, probably the person could have warned me like, hey, you know, don't stay at that place. It's not a good place. You can stay at that place, right? So yeah, definitely getting to know as many people as possible from different regions, right? That is uh -huh. really uh, useful. And uh, well, speaking of which, right? It just so happens uh, you can do that nowadays with our app, right? With the Real Life English app. You can just, you know, join the app, and uh, connect with anybody at the press yeah. of a button, right? Anybody in the world have a nice conversation that in English and get to know other people, other cultures, other ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we actually have a special shout out here to one of our app users, right, Cassie? So would you like to That's right. take it away and uh, read it? 
Okay, so this app user says, Hi guys, my name is Blynn from Ethiopia. This app is the most fabulous app ever. Before I got to know real life English, I tried to learn English on YouTube. However, this didn't give me the chance to speak with others. So what are you waiting for? Use it and start living your English. Oh yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Blan, yeah. for the shout out, the review. And, Amazing. Um, if you guys want us to shout you out, make sure you leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And we're going to find you and shout you out next time. All right. We also have here a comment from one of our YouTube viewers. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. would you like to read this comment for us, Kasi? So this is from Nora and Nora says, about two years ago, I was just scrolling on YouTube and I watched one of your videos. On that day, I wasn't able to understand what you were discussing. And that was when I promised myself to boost my English in order to come back to your channel and watch your videos without having the feeling of self-consciousness. And today, here I am, I can understand more than 90% of your conversation. You had a significant role in my English learning journey. Thank you in advance, guys. Incredible. Oh, amazing, Nora. Wow. Thank you so much. And congratulations, really right, on your uh, development, yeah. right? Now you can understand exactly. 90% of what you hear, so that's awesome. Um, and for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, uh, make sure you comment on the video podcast that we are putting out here every week. Uh, let us know what you've been thinking about the, the episodes, the podcast. If you have a topic to suggest, place it there as well, you know, and who knows, we might actually be reading your comment next time. So now, Kase, it's time for the real life way moment. Yeah, so, you know, uh, today we've been talking about travel experiences. We shared a little bit about, um, you know, some experiences that happened to us. Uh, which component of the real life way would you connect that conversation we had today to? I would say that it's definitely part of living your English. Like, don't mm. just learn it, live it. So what we did today was we were discussing real events that we experienced and we were able to use our English to do that, to have a really fun, um, engaging conversation and to share our experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, um, I think about it as, you know, we, we are... We are talking about real life situations also, yeah, because, you know, it's things that really happen to us, yeah? And even the, the short clip we watched about the baboons... Uh, in Cape Town, <laughs> that's something real that is happening nowadays. Yeah, I think that's a very recent mm -hmm. video. So we are we are practicing English here, as it is using the real world, right? Uh, by actually, mm -hmm. you know, accessing uh, real news or real uh, uh, content in the media, and just mm -hmm. you know doing those things or talking about those things in English, right? Mm -hmm. um, I I think this conversation that we are having today. We can also connect that a little bit with the second component, which is connecting your English to your identity in the sense that we are sharing personal stories here today. So your personal stories are usually part of who you are. Yeah, they shape mm -hmm. your life, your experiences. So using your English to talk about things that are relevant to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a, another point here that I think we could connect the real life way to. Yeah, when we're talking about ourselves or our experiences, we don't have to strain our brains that much or it's not that hard to to think about what we want to say. However, we might not always have the best vocabulary and I guess that's an opportunity mm -hmm. to <laughs> to learn some new vocabulary or to, you know, level up mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our how we describe, you know, these things that we do in our in our lives and in these experiences that we've had. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think when it comes to living your your English in this way and sharing stories with others, mm -hmm. um, you could. I mean, we spoke. I just want to say this. Like we spoke about um, these stories like earlier this week. We we, we you know we we discussed some of our um, our ideas for you know what we would talk about. But every time you tell the story, you remember another little detail, or you can. <laughs> add a little more so it's you know when we're using our english to connect with other people yeah. and share these experiences it's it's, it's such a great way to yeah. practice and think of different ways to say things awesome so i guess we can connect that with the challenge that we have for our listeners today right Cassie? and the challenge is yeah find a wild animal in our country or where you live and share with us your encounter 
with this animal. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You don't have to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> take a picture, yeah, with a thumbs up like that. You know. <laughs> no, no, we are just kidding, guys. Uh, but um, I guess the challenge here could be um, try to use as many adjectives as possible when describing a memorable travel experience you've had. Just to give some examples here, yeah. When talking about your trips or your traveling, uh, you can use words such as riveting. For example, yeah, something riveting is something really interesting, really good. So if you had a positive experience in a trip, you can say, oh, it was a riveting experience or even exciting. Uh -huh. It was an exciting trip that we had. <laughs> uh, what other examples of adjectives can we use in this context, Cassie? For example, I, if you had a bad experience, like, I mean, I wouldn't say that our experiences were bad, but they could be considered less than positive. <laughs> less optimal. I mean, in that moment, <laughs> less, <laughs> exactly. So you could use uh, adjectives like mortifying or mm. dreadful. I had a dreadful time uh, because the baboon stole all of my food and I, I had to go and buy, you know, more food and I, it cost <laughs> me a lot of money. Um, and if something is, is mortifying, it's actually bad in like, an embarrassing way like it's so embarrassing that you have a bad experience or it, it actually makes you feel um you know so for example like if uh <laughs> if you saw the snake the coral snake and you went ah! you know that would be embarrassing and everyone laughs at you and i'm kidding you can scream if you see the snake but you know, i would I, scream i, think, I, I think would I did. scream i actually think i did oh yeah oh <laughs> no one laughed though <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess everybody was uh, scared as well. Yes, yeah, so you know. <laughs> exactly, it's it's a legitimate reason to scream. I I would say, but I mean, if if you were one of those like guys who feels like, oh no, I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm gonna scream. This is I can handle a snake. <laughs> then I mean, maybe you would be mortified. Sure. Um, in that yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So try to use these adjectives in as many as you can when describing um, a travel experience that you've had. Maybe you can share your travel experience here in the comment section on YouTube if you are watching us on YouTube, or you can just send your story to fluencyteam at reallifeglobal.com. We are curious to you know to to read yeah your crazy memorable story all right and with that said thank you so much for listening to us or watching us here on youtube today and stay tuned for next week's episode one two three uh... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long one <laughs> I, I lost my breath you know in the middle you know <laughs> Ethan, if I'm not mistaken, I heard that you were not that good at learning languages. I mean, now you speak like, I heard like four or five languages. Like, how did that even happen? Maybe, or if your kid had, you know, the candy and you're wondering why is my kid acting like a zombie? It's probably because...